This is a quick tip video. I want to share a few tips on how to place the eyeball in a character so that it is easy to rig and you don't get problems like this with intersecting geometries and the eyeball going out of the eye socket. Someone who was following my Rigify face video was having this problem, so I decided to make a video on the topic. This is the first quick tip video on this channel. The usual CG dive video is much longer and it covers a larger topic. And I'll keep making these longer videos. I'll explain why I'm doing the shorter format at the end of this video. And let me know what you think about it in the comments. That would help me out a lot. Let's get straight into it. I should say that this video covers realistic and semi-realistic characters. Basically, characters where the shape of the eyeball is close to a sphere. Cartoony eyes are a different topic. By the way, this is not just a rigify problem. This will apply to any rig where the eye is controlled by a bone, which is almost any character rig. Okay, so why do rigged eyes sometimes go out of their eye sockets like this? I think it boils down to three components. The size and shape of the eye the pivot point on which the eye rotates, and the shape of the eyelids. So with this character, the main problem is the shape of the eye and the pivot point. If I isolate the eye, you'll see that it is not really a sphere. It has Its shape is close to an anatomically correct eye. And that, combined with the placement of the eye bone, creates this problem. So one of the easiest way to fix this is to use a sphere. I'm going to create a new sphere right where the eye is right now. And scale it down a bit. Let's hide the original eye. And I want to position this sphere such that if I rotated it, it will not intersect with the geometry of the eye in any way. Okay, and that will become the basis of my eye. That will also give me a good pivot point for this eye. So I'm going to place the 3D cursor at the pivot point of this sphere. Shift S, cursor to select it. Okay, next I want to bring the shape of the actual eye closer to the shape of the sphere. So I'm going to unhide it and hide the character mesh. And I'm going to move it back a little bit and then go to edit mode turn on x-ray and with proportional editing I'm going to start editing this eye and make it match the shape of the sphere. You may want to hide the iris to prevent uh, distorting its shape. Sculpting can also be useful here. Okay, this is looking good. So now I'm going to unhide everything. And to test things, I'm going to move the pivot point of the eye to the 3D cursor, which is also the pivot point of the sphere. Object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now I'm going to rotate the eye to test if there is any intersection. And I can see a little bit of intersection in, in this position. So maybe I'll go to edit mode, select everything and move the eye just slightly backwards on the y-axis. And it is looking fairly really good. So now I'll go to my meta rig, just select the eye bone and uh, press shift S and choose selection to cursor. And that will snap the eye bone to the 3D cursor, which was the pivot point that we wanted. And now I'm going to generate the rig. Now if I try moving the eyes, this eye which I fixed will behave quite well. And even the other one for which I didn't fix the shape behaves much better. And that is just because we changed the pivot point by moving the eye bone. And that's it for this video. Here I showed how to fix this eye problem. It would be even better if we never got into this mess in the first place. These eye intersection problems can be easily prevented in the modeling stage if you simply add a sphere where the eye would be and you model the eyelids so that they wrap around the sphere. 
That way the eyeball will be there, the pivot point will already be set up correctly and 90% of the rigging job will also be done. Speaking of the eyelids, aside from making sure that they wrap around the eyeball, one additional tip is to make them fairly thick, much thicker than you may think. That tends to make the eyes more aesthetically pleasing and it will also help you avoid intersections in the eye area. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. As I said, I'm going to keep making the uh, longer videos that are typical for CG Dive, but the thing is the longer videos take a lot of time to prepare. It often takes more than a week to research, test, record and edit one of the longer videos. So I'm going to try to post these shorter videos in between the longer ones to keep the channel active and alive and to bring you more content that I hope you would like. Let me know what you thought, like, subscribe and talk to you next time.